signing up for the Wright Academy program. Uh, we're going to put together a little instructional video for you guys that we want you to watch before you show up. It's just going to be on the seven basic skills that you're going to do every night when you show up here. And we're going to go over some of the basic techniques of that so you're familiar with it before you get here. So today we'll be talking about the tire drag, uh, the tower, hydrants, ladders, uh, pipe pole props, and uh, axis sledge. So when you guys show up on uh, 91, please have watched this video and be familiar with these skills. Hey, this is the uh, tower event, so you'll do this event every night when you come here. A couple things to, to remember when you're going to do the towers. When you're approaching this event, you want to set your pack up. So when you set your pack up, you want to make sure that you have all four straps tight. So you want this pack to be as tight and as close to your back as you can get it. The reason for that is, is we're going to start loading this with weight. And if your top straps are loose, your bottom straps are loose, you're going to be fighting that weight uh, either forward or backward. So as long as this is tight, you're ready to load the weight onto it so that you won't see any daylight in between this pack and this coat. So if, if this were to be not in the proper position, you would be able to see daylight in between his back and the SCBA. So if we were to load this up with weight, he would be fighting gravity in, in two ways. One, holding that weight up and holding it forward. So as you approach this event and, and you know that this is going to be the next event that you're going to be doing, you want to get this pack as tight as you can make it. So this is where we keep our, our high-rise gear for our tower event. We'll be using bottles first, bottles of always on first, and then the hose pack. So Kai's going to approach this stand. This. One thing you want to look out for is making sure these aren't off center. So if I'm in his crew and I'm behind him and he's offset, I'm going to communicate that with, with, with him. I'm going to tell him, hold on, help him straighten this out. So make sure you're always set up correctly before you go to do the event. So his bottles are on now, he's going to go and put his pack on. The pack will sit just like this. Again, if I'm behind him, I'm going to make sure that his pack is, is not flaying off his bottle, that it's snug against his body. It's not off to one side, so it's balanced. And this is, this is an acceptable version for him to now take a tool and go do the tower. Another acceptable way to load this would be over one shoulder. So both versions are acceptable. Uh, pros and cons of that one. Now he's got his tool in his other hand, so he's got his hands are tied up now. Um, but a lot of people do prefer this method over the other. So that's the tower event, guys. Remember that when you get here, and now he's ready to go and, and do the tower. Go ahead. All right, so this is another uh, event that you'll be doing. It's called the hydrant prop. So uh, what's important here is to stay behind this red safety line. Um, and, and the technique for it is just a simple push-pull. So you push it, and you push the, the hydrant wrench one way, and then go pull. So as you can see, he pushes it and he pulls it. This is obviously simulating opening a hydrant in, in the field. So as you can see, he pushes staying behind that red safety line. This next event is uh, the ladder raise. So what this simulates is obviously raising a ladder in the field. Uh, this here uh, is a ladder that's raised by this, this halyard. So what's important is he has his foot or his heel at the butt of the ladder and then his hip also touching. So what he'll do is he'll raise this ladder up um, and he'll go all the way up and he'll make sure that it softly touches the top and then he'll slow the control working on the forward and backward tire drag. This is just gonna be simulating pulling the hose line. So um, Chris here, he's gonna start at the hose. He's gonna grab the middle of it. He's gonna grab the middle of the hose. He's gonna throw it over his shoulder. Check the shoulder first. 
He's going to throw the slack over his shoulder, which creates a little loop right here. He's going to put his hands through it or on top of it, whatever he prefers. And all he's going to do is just lean forward and pull. So he's going to pull that as fast and as hard as he can all the way down to the end. He's going to flip it over. Once he gets to the other end, we're going to do a backwards tire drag. Backwards is a little harder. We really want to work on technique here. Same way, he's going to start in the middle of the hose. He can wrap the slack around his body to get it out of the way, but he's not going to put any tension on this hose here. All the tension is going to be in his hand. So what he's going to do here is he's going to fold this hose like a taco, then he's gonna grip it like a golf club. So you wanna basically create a handle for yourself. He's gonna make his hands as big as possible and then squeeze down on it as hard as he can, squeeze it with everything he's got, lean backwards and pull. All the tension is gonna be on his hands. We're gonna work on grip strength here. He's gonna drag it as fast and hard as he can to the other end, flip it over and get it ready for the next guy. So we're going to talk about the sledgehammer today. Um, the skill is pretty important. It's one of the things you're going to do on fire ground. It's one of those things that you're going to be doing on emergency situations, so it's really important to take it very seriously. Uh, so when you're swinging the sledge, uh, obviously it's a two-handed operation. You're going to uh, line your body up parallel, um, you know, perpendicular to the target, and you're going to try to hit the same target zone about the size of a Coke can. And the reason it's really important to hit the same spot is because you could have your partner on the other end of a, of a tool or something you're operating, and it needs to be really precise so you don't want to hurt anybody else on the fire ground. Uh, the basic uh, way to swing a sledgehammer is you're going to pick a target, you're perpendicular, and it's going to be like a baseball swing where as you go you have your hands split apart like this, you're going to um, twist your hips and you're going to put your torso through and you're going to throw the head of the hammer right at your target, sliding your hands down so they get out of the way. If you don't slide your hands down, there's a chance you could uh, injure your fingers and whatever else you're coming up against. So you're going to swing through, Swing your hands down, grab it at the top, reset. And you need to be proficient going both left and right. And Mr. Metters is going to demonstrate some of the, some of the sledge technique. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to work on the axe chop. It's just going to simulate cutting a hole in a roof. So Chris here is going to demonstrate what we want you to do. This is different than chopping a log for firewood. So rather than doing big overhead lumberjack swings, we're going to be doing short chops. So Chris here is going to get a staggered stance. He's going to put his top hand about two thirds of the way up the handle, his bottom hand at the bottom of the ax, and he's going to do short choppy swings. Short, powerful swings. Um, so if, you're, if your uh, right hand is on the top of the axe, your right foot is going to be forward and vice versa. So we're going to do typically 30 on the right, switch, 30 on the left. Okay, the next event we'll be talking about is pike. So the pike pole prop um, looks pretty simple when you first take a look at it, just smashing the smashing wood with a pike pole, but there are some things we want you guys to remember technically and be familiar with. One, one of our biggest is, is keeping this pike pole straight up and down. And what I mean by that is, is any time this pike pole, if you're going to hit this wood and this pike pole starts getting away from your body or too close in, uh, it starts creating problems. So think of this as kind of a, a reverse sewing machine, if you will. This pike pole goes straight up and down, just like barbells. No deviation from that path. Don't let it get too far away from your body or too close. Um, so Kai, well, here at, at, at the 8, we are going to have holes on this on this board. You can see most of these are already knocked out. These will be spray painted. So when you approach this, your job is to is to eliminate the paint or knock out that, that entire uh, circle of paint from this wood. So once those nine circles have been cut out, this board comes out and you guys will replace this wood and put a new one in. So a couple things, when you approach this, just like we talked about in the tower, is your path. When you know that you're approaching this event and you're gonna be doing the pike pole, 
You want to loosen your shoulders. Any time your shoulder straps, anytime you're going to be working above your head, uh, moving your arms in, in a, a greater range of motion, you want that freedom from your pack. If this is cinched down real tight on your shoulder and you're using a lot of force going up, a lot of injuries have, have come from that. So loose straps, loose shoulder straps, tight, tight waist straps, and you're always going to put your shield down. Uh, so first thing you're going to do is, is communicate with your partner. So if I'm Kai's partner, I'm going to be holding this wooden cup like this. So that's why I ask that when you do this event, you're facing the person or your partner who's holding this wood in place so you guys can communicate. So he's not going to start hitting that piece of wood until he's, he knows that I'm holding this wood. The reason for that is if he were to start hitting this wood, this wood would start moving out of the prop and it would make it a lot more difficult for him and then we would have to replace that piece of wood without making the full cut. So he's going to look at me, we're going to communicate, we're ready, and he's going to go ahead and start knocking the hole out of this. hitting through his target. So he's not just going to make contact with that wood. His goal is to hit through that wood. And it's, it's an explosive movement. So he can't ease into this movement. He can't get to the wood and push through. It's a very, very explosive movement. You're trying to obliterate this wood, if you will. So uh, other than that, that's the basics of the pike pole prop. The finer details of this we'll discuss uh, once you do get into the academy. Thank you. Today we're going to talk about three lifts that we do here at the Ape that are going to be done on your first lifting day. So we want to just do this to help you have an idea of the technique we use here. It's a safe, effective way where you can gain strength and it also crosses over to the fire ground. So that's why we do things the way we do it. So we're going to show you a squat first. Now you always want to squat inside the power rack because it's safer. So we set the J hooks inside the rack and we set the safety bars at a level where when you're at the bottom of your squat, they are not going to get in your way, you're not going to touch them, but they're really close in case you do fail and you need them. It's the safest way to lift. Now, uh, I also want to mention your footwear. When you squat, you do not want to be in jogging shoes with a big cushy heel. It's hard to keep your stability and keep your feet uh, flat on the ground. So we either squat in squat shoes if you got them are great, but you can just have something flat like... Okay, so we're going to set the height of the bar at armpit level. So you can see that Mike has that bar right about armpit level. You want to use a, a grip that as close as you can possibly put your hands together with still having your shoulders comfortable. So for Mike, this is a good grip here. What that's going to do is help him create some uh, tightness in his upper back. So at this point, he's going to step his, put his uh, head under the bar and he's going to put the bar on his back. We like to teach a low bar squat. There will be a few instances where if you don't have good shoulder flexibility, we'll work with a high bar squat. But you use a lot more hip drive in a low bar squat, which crosses over to the things we do on the fire ground. So that's why we're going to try to teach everybody that squat. As far as the way he's holding the bar, you can either wrap his thumbs over the top of the bar or wrap his thumbs under, whatever you're comfortable with. What we're looking for there is to have a, a nice even grip where the bar's in the middle of his back and he's got a, light, a lot of tightness here and he's created a nice shelf to hold that bar. He's doing a low bar squat, which means the bar is not resting on his traps. It's down below the ridge in his scapula. So Mike's looking uh, perfect right here. He's gonna have his eyes down towards the ground. They're going to look where the wall meets the floor in front of him. That's going to give him a nice neutral net and it's going to be a nice strong position for lifting that weight. At this point, he's going to take a nice big breath and he's going to pull that bar right up out of the rack. He's going to take two to three steps back, just enough to get his position, foot position set. Now, foot position, he wants his heels just about shoulder width and slightly turned out about 30 degrees. So he's in a nice position right there. He's gonna make sure that gaze is down. He's got his chest lifted. By lifting his chest, he's got a nice flat back. He's gonna keep that position throughout the lift. One more big breath. He's gonna unlock his hips, let his hips fall back, and his knees out. 
He's at the bottom of the squat right here. He's maintained that upper body position and he's broken parallel. That's where you want to be. The crease at the top of his hips is equal to or below his knees and he's been able to maintain that upper body position. At this point, he is going to drive his hips straight up towards the ceiling, maintain that upper body position and he's got a nice good squat right there and he's ready to do another one. Go ahead and rack it. When you rack it, you want to step it all the way into the rack and then set it down. The next lift we're going to talk about is deadlift. On a step under the bar, he's going to keep his shins one inch away from that bar. That's the, the width he wants to be away from the bar. And he wants to set his heels, probably the easiest way is where you would do a vertical jump. For most people, that's about 12 to 15 inches apart at the heel. That's a nice good deadlift stance to start with. So, Kai's got those shins an inch off the bar, heels the same spot he would be for a vertical jump. At this point, he's going to bend at his waist and bend his knees as little as possible to put his hands on the bar. He's going to grasp that bar just outside of his shins with an alternating grip. He's going to put the bar actually in his, where his fingers meet his hand, not way down in his palm. That's going to be a better position for him. He's going to grasp that bar and he's going to squeeze it as tight as he can. At this point, he's going to touch his shins to the bar without lowering his hips too much. Now he wants to take a nice big breath in and he's going to lift his chest. That gave him a nice flat back. He's in a great position to do that deadlift. He's going to pull on the bar as he pushes the floor away from him. His deadlift is done when his hips are extended, his knees are extended, and his chest is up. That's a great position there. Now he needs to set the bar back down in a way that he is ready to do his next lift. So he's got to push his hips back first as that bar slides down his body. As he gets past his knees, that's where his knees bend. He's in the position to do another lift, and he follows all those same steps. Okay, let's talk about the bench press. Bench press, first thing you want to do is set the J-hooks at a good position. Um, you want to not have that bar too close to your face so that you got to waste a lot of energy pulling that off. And you don't want that bar so far away that you've got to round your shoulders to get it off. So for Kai, we've probably got this bar in a good position. At this point, he's going to lay flat down on the bench. He wants to have his eyes right underneath this bottom part of the bar and he's got no he's going to have his body in a good position he wants his heels just under his knees feet flat on the floor floor um, now shoulders are going to be back and down that's going to put him in a good strong position the width that he wants his hands you want to get a nice medium grip because it's practical it's safe and it's effective at this point kai's going to put that weight right down here in the, in the bottom the base of the palm of his hand that's going to keep his wrist from being too far bent back when he lifts. So he's got it in the palm of his hand. He's going to wrap his uh, thumbs around the bar for safety. And he's going to squeeze that bar really tight. He also wants to bend that bar or slightly internally rotate his elbows. That's going to protect his shoulders and help him create some, some tightness. At this point, he's going to take a big, big breath in. And he's going to lift that bar off the rack. He wants to take that bar to where it's perpendicular to his body uh, and it's right above the lower chest or nipple level. At this point, he's going to bring the bar down slowly under control and you see where Kai's got his elbows? He's got them not way up here at a 90 degree bend and not right down here next to his body. You want to be somewhere between those two points, right around 45 degrees from your body is usually a real good point. Um, after Kai's brought that bar down slowly under control and chest touches his chest, he's going to drive the bar straight up explosively and at that same point he's going to press his heels and use his legs to help him drive that bar up without raising his hips off the bench. So Kai will do a couple more reps. That's good bench press right there. At this point you want to make sure you finish your last rep, it's all the way out. And now he's going to take it back into the, the rack. I'm ready. Hey guys, thanks for watching our instructional video. Thank you for signing up for the Ape Academy Prep Program. Whether you're looking for an opportunity with a volunteer department, if you've got a junior college program ahead of you, or you're trying to get ready or, or, or find a professional firefighting career with one of the Valley departments, I think this program will greatly benefit you. 
greatly uh, prepare you for whatever experience you have ahead of you. So just a reminder, the, the seven events, we, the skills events we discussed in this video, um, we will go into greater depth on those things. We wanted to get the basic uh, foundation of those skills out to you so you're familiar with that when you show up. But you will be ran through skills courses with professional firefighters who will go into great detail on technique, uh, mental prep, physical prep for each of these skills, as well as the, the lifting techniques that Dave showed you. So every night you're going to have coaching uh, from professional firefighters that will go into great detail and it help you prepare for whatever it is that you're trying to do uh, in the fire service. But again, thank you from the, the Great Ape staff for signing up for our program. We look forward to meeting you guys.